We have diffusion and osmosis. Diffusion is the net movement of anything from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Osmosis is a net diffusion of water molecules across a semi-permeable membrane. Okay, so osmosis is a type of diffusion, specifically in regards to water, whereas diffusion is anything. Okay, it moves from a high concentration to a low concentration. So just like this, goes from high to low. I want you to always remember, imagine you have a triangle and you have 20 tennis balls at the top of the triangle, just like we have here. Then where are they going to go once we place them on that triangle? They're going to roll down. Okay, that's how I want you to remember the, the way the concentration gradient moves from high to low, just like in the triangle. Um, so, what is the concentration gradient? If the solute is con concentrated in one area more than the other, it causes the solute to move down the concentration gradient from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration so that um, it can produce an equal concentration throughout the whole solution. So, when you put salt in water, it diffuses and it's trying to um, get an equal concentration of salt all throughout the water, not just in one place um, in the water. Facilitated diffusion is if the membrane is impermeable to a solute, it will move through it, it will move through um, through transport proteins. So channel proteins or carrier proteins, just like we saw here. This is called facilitated diffusion when we have something move through a transport protein and not just diffuse straight across the membrane. Okay. And then we have exocytosis and endocytosis. So exo, I, I want you to think exocytosis, exo, exit. What is that? Well, it's when things leave the cell. So basically you have a vesicle that will transport things out of the cell. Think of it like the taxi for the cell that's driving it to the airport so it can leave the cell. So let's say we have a solute that wants to leave the cell. It will... Um, be enclosed in a vesicle. The vesicle will then bind to the membrane, spill it out. This solute will spill out um, and then the vesicle can come back in. Endocytosis is the opposite. Endocytosis is when we transport things into the cell. So um, opposite happens, okay? Things kind of congregate in the membrane. A vesicle will form and then the vesicle takes it into the cell. Um, yeah. There are different forms of endocytosis, um, phagocytosis, pinocytosis, and receptor-mediated endocytosis, where it needs to bind to a um, receptor in order to get into the cell. So we have little receptors, and it'll attach to a receptor, and then through the receptor come into the cell. Pinocytosis, um, same idea, it's just mixed between different solutes, and then phagocytosis is when um, we have whole foods or other particles coming into the cell. Pinocytosis is usually um, water-soluble material as well. Okay, then we also have surface area to volume ratio. The surface area to volume ratio of a cell highlights the comparison between the size of the cell, sorry, the size of the outside of the object and the inside. Um, so when a cell grows, its volume increases at a greater rate than its surface area. So its surface area to volume ratio decreases. Okay, so think, if I have a single sheet of paper, let's say I have a sheet of paper this big, okay, um, and then I start cutting it into smaller and smaller strips, I'm increasing its surface area. How? Because if, okay, let's say I have a piece of paper, and I'm cutting it into small strips, those edges will now be exposed on the surface. They weren't before, they were in the piece of paper. So I'm increasing the amount of surface there is in the object. Okay, so I'm increasing its surface area.